Chapter 63 The Sons of God One of the most important definitions of a Christian is given by John 1, 12-13. But as many as received him, to them gave he the power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. First of all, John compares our regeneration to Christ's virgin birth. Christ owed his birth not to human blood, nor to any physical urge, nor to a human plan or design, but to God. Our rebirth, like his birth, is a miracle. Second, such a rebirth is into power, power to become the sons of God. Such a statement had only one meaning in John's day. To be a son of God meant to be filled with power, with a power which is beyond man and this world. Powerless Christianity is thus a contraindication in terms. To be a Christian is to be a man of power, a world shaker, and a world mover. Of the early Christians, it was said that they turned the world upside down, Acts 17.6. All too many churchmen today can do no more than turn a teacup upside down. The true believer is defined by power, power in the word and the spirit. We are called to power. Why settle for anything less? To turn our backs on this calling to power is to turn our backs on the Lord himself. We have a calling to exercise dominion and subdue the earth, Genesis 1, 26-28. We dare not be indifferent to that calling. As the sons of power, we have a world to conquer and had better recognize our task and calling. It is the Lord who calls us, and it is He who empowers us.